welcome back to my channel. Alright, today I am finally swatching my Schmincke Hordam Aquarelle watercolors. So, this is the lovely box that it comes in. Now, I got the 36 count set, which is this one here. <clears throat> so, this is like the color numbers, I guess. Um, but I wanted to swatch these on camera. Now these are 36 half pans, which will take me forever to get through. A half pan is a lot more paint than a lot of people realize, <laughs> especially in watercolor. Um, what is this? Something that I'm going to have to use Google Translate on. All right. <clears throat> so it does come with a swatch chart, but the problem is uh, you have to fill it out yourself and it's weird because I've seen a few unboxing and swatching of Schmincke sets like this and their chart is filled out. So I'm, I'm like, how come mine isn't? <laughs> like they had a chart on thicker paper too, had the name, number, pigment. This is all I got. So I will actually be putting it in my watercolor um, sketchbook right here. This is not them. <laughs> Um, but I will be putting it in my watercolor sketchbook and I'll actually be using my stamp from Waffle Flower. So on it, you might not be able to see it too well, but uh, it'll have the name and then I can write in the, you know, whether it's granulating, it's transparency, um, light fast, and then pigment. So we'll be stamping that and I'm going to show you how I do that. <clears throat> now I'm not going to stamp 36 times. <laughs> I'll pause and do that. On my own but let's take a look at this thing real quick so here is the palette it does have the little thumb holder I, not that I ever stand in watercolor but <clears throat> pop it open I like that it's kind of a little bit matte not super shiny all right so you have some mixing wells here actually really good like deep ones pop it open all right, look at those beautiful colors. Why is that one popped out? Well, I'll just pull it up so you can see it. So it looks like, okay. So on their labels, they have, let me zoom you in. <laughs> um, on the side here, that is the number that was on the back of the box. It has the transparency and granulating information. That's what those symbols are. Um, and then it has the light fast rating. So this is a four or four stars. I wonder if it has the pigment. Oh, it does. On the other side, it has the pigment. PY35. And then the name is um, Cadmium Yellow Light. <clears throat> and so, man, these things are going to be, oh, I hate unwrapping these. Just the other day I was watching someone's channel. I can't remember who <laughs> in there. They said they love unwrapping these uh, because it's like opening a Christmas present. I'm like, oh, you do you. <laughs> it's not me. So yeah, what I will be doing is um, unwrapping each one of these, not on camera, of course, because then we would be here all day watching me fiddle around with this. But I did want to show you. <clears throat> Oops. All right. So you open that. Most watercolor um, palette sets do this, like this little me metal tray that's holding in your palettes pops out and you should have other mixing wells underneath it. Um, just in case you didn't know, there's a fun little FYI, like Paul Rubens, um, even my watercolor confections uh, pop out. So <clears throat> rarely do you get one of these metal ones that they don't, <laughs> um, even budget ones. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I will open one of them on camera, but oh, you can push these little things back to get them out easier, but the problem is then you got to push them back in. All right, I just need to loosen it though. <clears throat> Come on, push back. <laughs> Watch me struggle to get a pan out. All right, so let me get my little craft knife. <clears throat> I do need to preserve the label though um just so i can write down the info so i'm gonna make sure i don't cut that open but i want to unwrap one well, these unwrap pretty easy and there you go that is the little half pan there now 
The one Bummeru is it doesn't have the name of it on the half pan. Now, not all brands do that, so that's not like a big deal, but usually what I end up doing is I take a Sharpie and I go and write like the name on it only because while I do swatch them in order, um, things happen, you know, like say one of these empties out or <clears throat> like, um, you know, I end up changing up the order, which I doubt I will. But if I do change it, I, I want to know what that color is. <laughs> so I'll probably have to take a Sharpie and write those down, which is going to be a pain and I will not do that today. So let me unwrap all of these. Um, and then I will come back and show you Wow, those are loose in there. Once you unwrap them, um, I'll come back and show you how I stamp and then hopefully I can tighten these up so they don't wiggle. Um, <clears throat> I have seen people take like, uh, what you call it? A hot glue gun and just, uh, put a little bit down and glue them down. I don't like to do that though, because then you have to break them up when you want to change them out. Um, I've also seen you have the, they're like, uh, almost like command strips, but magnets. You can lay down a whole strip here and then put them on the back of your little things and, um, make it all magnet. But I'm just going to tighten these and hope they tighten enough to hold in the little half pans. All right. I will be back. Okay, real quick before we get um, swatching and I finish unwrapping, I'm going to show you guys how I do these stamps. So like I said, this is a set from Waffle Flower. Um, wait, do I have it right close by? <laughs> I think it comes off of this one. I will leave a link in the description below, but it's one of their color swatch sets. And so it's just a clear stamp. So these are three separate pieces I've put together on here and then I use the VersaFine in Nocturne that's black now you need to make sure you're not using like distress ink here you need to use a pigment ink that will not reactivate with water that's really important when you're stamping out for your watercolors I can pop that open all right and then all I do is get a nice little if you want to do it right, you can apply the pad to the stamp. <laughs> I'm naughty and I don't do it right. Just get a nice coating, make sure it's all even. <clears throat> and because I have the clear stamp, I can see that I'm not getting in the way. So I just press it down. Sometimes I'm a little, you know, crooked, whatever. See, and then I've got my name, little info to fill out. And then what I do is I just take any um, alcohol marker will do. I have, just happen to have an Ohuhu. Take my Ohuhu, maybe, and I make a line because when I go to swatch, I want to test the transparency myself. I know the label says one thing. I still want to see it myself. I want to test the, you know, opacity. So I am basically going to keep doing that now. Because some of these are granulating, not all, but some, I do want to um, give them a tiny bit of room, but not a ton. So I'll probably do three um, per row here. And I'm going to actually, so this is a smaller watercolor sketchbook. What is this? Seven by 10. So I'll actually have it double sided. So it just comes across like so. And I think that's how I'm going to run it because, um, yeah. That's the best way I could think of. So basically I'll have it going six by six, I think is what we'll do. And then I also use another um, pigment liner. Any, Just make sure it's labeled as a pigment liner. You don't have to use the specific brand I'm using. This is a Spectrum Noir art liner, but I've got like a bajillion different ones from art boxes. <clears throat> but this is what I'll use to write down the name, pigment number, circle the stars and fill in all the other stuff. Um, so that's what I'll be doing while I unwrap these and then we'll come back and do the swatch. Okay, well, we have finished unwrapping. <laughs> I have like a pile of labels off to the side. I cannot tell you how like impatient I was. I was just like, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and then I had to fill out my chart here. So this is what it looks like when I have filled it out. I filled in the um, little triangles where necessary, circled the light fast star rating, and then of course wrote down the pigments for all of them. So it 
goes across like so, or I should say like so. Uh, are they a little crooked here and there? Yeah, but you know, whatever. Now, one thing, after I unwrapped all 36, now I will give Schminka credit. I'm saying Schminka. I know I've heard it also Schminke, um, but I've heard it both ways, so I'm like potato, potato <laughs> at this point. And what comes out of my mouth naturally is schminka, so that's what I'm going to call it, just in case anyone uh, says anything about that. Uh, so one thing I did notice after unwrapping these, I have tightened these little buggers as much as I can. These metal things here, these little brackets, you can pull them this way and tighten. And I mean, they're as far as they will go. And these things are just, woo, they're not in there very tight. Like my... My other watercolor sets, um, when you pull these things, they don't slip and slide like that. So yeah, that was just one thing I noticed, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm here for the paint. Uh, but still, I was like, wow, these things will not tighten up. Um, so normally, if I was doing like a smaller batch of watercolors or, um, you know, something specialty, well, these are special, but you know what I mean, um, or if I was just swatching like a few colors, I would use the pipette and drop water on each one. But we're swatching this entire bad boy, so we're just gonna take out our little distress sprayer. And yeah, it's gonna get messy. So see, all pretty and beautiful now. Say goodbye to that. Because <laughs> we are just gonna squirt away. Oop. Oh wow, those activate quick. On some of those, you're spraying it and it's already flowing. That's what I want to see. Oh, I don't have my Tim Holtz glass mat down, so I'm just going to make a hot, watery mess on my desk. Okay, so those need to sit for a sec, even though they're already starting to bloom there. Um, I am going to give them one second. I think today I am going to swatch, well, these are Schminka. I should use a expensive pretty brush shouldn't I so let me grab one so yes we are going to use the silver black velvet number eight round for the schminka because well it's an expensive paint why would I use my cheaper I did have a Neptune next to me and Neptune isn't like bad or anything but this is probably the most expensive watercolor paint you will ever see me purchase <laughs> so Let's see, um, how am I going to fit this all on my desk and still be able to get in there? Okay, so let's see. We're going to start with our lemon yellow. And like I said, I did put in the transparency rating. Uh, some people call it transparency. Other people refer to it as opacity. Um, and let's just dive in. I want my brush pretty wet. Now, some of these are granulating, um, so for granulating colors, you want more water. Like if you have a really dry brush, you're not going to get the, the fun of the granulation. Ooh, so pretty. So we're going to just keep going across. Yeah, these red, <laughs> these red, these re-wet really well. I don't do a ton of um, swatching on camera anymore. I just leave that for the special stuff. And this is definitely one I have to do on camera because this is the most expensive set of watercolors I have ever bought. Now, if it's coloring or, you know, your black line isn't there when you swatch, don't assume that it's opaque. Wait till it dries because that can be quite misleading. Often when it dries, the line comes back up. That's a really pretty color, really pretty. You can always go back in with a little water here at the end as well if you wanna just wet it out. You know, see what it does. Okay. Now we are on to, oh, this is the hard part. I didn't, I haven't labeled my little thingies yet, so we're on five. One, two, three, four, five there. Five is over there. <laughs> I gotta make sure I'm keeping count. It's just interesting. The next color is transparent orange, but the 
pan looks red. Oops, we're bleeding in a little there. That's okay. All right, so now we're on transparent orange that looks like it's in a red pan. These are super glossy. Like when you take the wrappers off, you're just like, oh my gosh, they're so glossy. Um, some were cracked, but that's not a big deal <laughs> at all. <laughs> all right, now we're on to cadmium red light. That is definitely opaque. <laughs> Won't lie with your rating, Schminka. <laughs> All right, um, Scarlet. Ooh, this one's gonna be pretty. I just want to see like what colors do we get. I'm totally covering up my name there, but whatever. I want to see what colors we get in this 36 count. You know. Okay, so now I gotta move over. Sorry, you're gonna catch me counting a whole bunch, but that's because I want to make sure. I'm not screwing this up. So one, two, now we're on to this one. Yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful color. I really like that color. Okay, permanent carmine. Oh, this one looks pretty. Oh, so pretty. Some of these are gonna be a little look a little more opaque than they really are just because of how much I'm picking up. Magenta. Oh, that's a gorgeous one. I like that one a lot. Alright. I didn't actually grab very much on that one. That's a beautiful color. Very beautiful. All right, ultramarine violet. Ooh, so this one is going to be pretty opaque. Was this one for indigo? Oh wow, though, look at that color. You can just see it coming through there. So pretty. I love the name of this Ultramarine Finest. That's pretty too. Um, Mountain Blue. So we are. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I gotta count my way through. This one is, I know it looks a little opaque, but it's just all the. All right, now we're on Prussian blue. Oh, I can't wait to see this one. Oh, that's pretty. That is really pretty. Yes, you're going to hear me doing commentary through this whole thing. One, two, three, four, five. I'm terribly sorry. You can always mute me and put some music on. Playback, change up the playback speed. Wow, look at that color. That is gorgeous. Um, But like I said, I'm probably never going to spend this kind of money on watercolors again. <laughs> okay, I probably will. But in the now... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I might uh, pull out some watercolor paper after we swatch and see how that one granulates. Oh, jeez. So, one, two, three, four. On this one now? Yeah, on that one. Prussian green. Ooh. Okay, I'm in love with these colors. Lovely, lovely. I did, I will admit, already order some tubes of Schminka, and I haven't even swatched these, but I knew I would love them. <laughs> so it was worth it. And I wanted to get some other super granulating watercolors. Okay, now we're on cobalt green dark. 
I need one more line. That one's drying up on me. That one's going to be a really pretty one, too. Oh, these are lovely. Okay, don't ask me how to say that name. Can't see these pans move in the tray, so I'm going to have to do one of those many tricks that are out there for keeping them down, unless there's a trick I'm missing, but um, I have tightened those little metal brackets as tight as they will go. Ooh, that would be a stellar color. Olive green, yellowish. You can just see it in there. Ooh. Okay, actually I'm gonna have to change water cups because these are gonna be lighter. And these are mixed with white. PW6, um, both of them, Naples Yellow and that one are both mixed with white, so I'm not surprised that they would be rather opaque. <laughs> Gotta mix them though to get that color. Okay, Yellow Ochre. Ooh, not too shabby. Okay, so now we're on Burnt Sienna. We're getting into the browns and what, what have you. That is a pretty one, though. And that's like an orangey rust color, but it's so pretty. English Venetian Red. That is a thick one. Okay, now we're on to Indian Red. That's a gorgeous color. Very pretty. Oh, let me stick my hand in it as I'm trying to move my book. <laughs> Whatever. Watercolor's messy. All right. Burnt Umber. Oh, I like that one. It's a really nice one, too. And then we've got our Sepia Brown. Oh, need more on my brush. Can you hear those moving in the pan? <laughs> That is not annoying whatsoever. Come on, Schminka. All that money, you'd think they would make a pan that would stay still. Ivory black. I'm gonna grab some more. That is really nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these dry because watercolors should not be judged while wet. I mean, granted. They're gorgeous while wet, but you want them to dry. You want them to do whatever they want to do. Also, you want to wait for them to dry because, for example, remember when I first put that down, you couldn't see the line at all. Now, as it dries, the line is popping up. So, you know, the opacity and whatnot. And then while I wait for these to dry, I'm going to go play by myself, not on camera, <laughs> with these colors and um, especially the ones that are have a full granulation tick. I just want to see if they, how they look on another thing of paper. Cause you need a lot of water and you need to let them move more than I have the space in this swatch book. But the nice thing is if I hold it up. So when I go to use my Schwinka, I can just open my swatch book and they're all right here for these 36. So yeah, I will be back once these dry and then we can chit chat. Okay, so everything is officially dry, and you'll see even some of those ones that were really opaque looking, you know, and the line was just covered, you can kind of see it a little bit. Of course, um, some of them I laid down a little heavy, just because I was kind of trying to, anytime you swatch a new watercolor, you have to kind of get used to how, you know, how heavy is that pigment when you pick it up? How much do I need on my brush? And well, you don't need a lot <laughs> with this brand. So yeah, everything is dry and looking lovely. I do have a great red. Um, I've got some beautiful blues. I mean, look at all these blues. I love that turquoise. Oh my gosh, this turquoise is, well, it's magical is what it is. <laughs> um, now, the granulating ones are the ones that are supposed to granulate. 
you're not going to really see that in these swatches just because one i didn't have a ton of water two i did do a wet to dry swatch that said a wet to dry swatch you can still get granulation it's just you need a lot more water on your brush um so don't think you can't get granulating from that and then you just need more space you know you gotta let it flow so while these were drying i just took some and i was playing with them just here at the bottom um so i did so here was a wet to dry swatch in my book and the reason i did that is a lot of my watercolor i do wet to dry so i want to swatch wet to dry because that's predominantly what i'm going to do however I did do some wet on wet swatches in this little sheet here as I was playing around with it and they swatched beautifully. So this was wet on wet. This is that Helio turquoise color right here. And just look how gorgeous it lays down when you do a wet on wet. And it did granulate there. Um, I was basically playing with all the colors that granulate because <laughs> I wanted to see it. So this one also granulated, but it's not which one was this this was uh cobalt green it's not as mm, i don't know what's the word <laughs> got no words today i don't know it wasn't as impressive scout was talking to us if you can't tell it wasn't as impressive as i had hoped same with the helio turquoise but that's no big deal um these aren't super granulating colors by any means, um, I did buy a set of super granulating ones because I want to play with them. So this was by far the most expensive palette of watercolors I have ever bought. Um, this is over $200 for 36 half pans. Oh, that's just hard to say. <laughs> uh, am I pleased with it? Yeah, like these are absolutely beautiful when they lay down. They're very smooth. Um, you don't have to pick up a lot at all. The pigment is just wowza. I mean, look at that red. Good lord, that thing is just like jumping out at you. <laughs> um, the color selection I like a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I am very pleased. This one kind of did something funky when we swatched it. I'm going to have to go back and, and play with it. It's almost like I need to mix it up a little more. I just want to make sure that's not how it's going to constantly come out because there's transparent yellow. Transparent orange kind of does something a little similar, though. Do I have any other transparent ones? I didn't think so. But yeah, so you can buy other half pans. They came out with some new colors not too long ago. I'm trying to get my hands on the galaxy ones. Um, that's just hard to do because they're sold out all the time. <laughs> so, But I did order two tube sets. Uh, I actually prefer tubes. Um, and it's primarily because I don't travel much. I don't, you know, so I like to be able to just take out the tube, put it on my palette and play with it there. Um, I do not put tubes into palettes. I know a lot of people do that. Um, I don't, I don't like to do that. If it's in a tube, it's staying in a tube. I just like, I just like the versatility of it. It's messy for sure, but it's my thing. <laughs> so yeah, I did get two tube sets. Uh, there's Shire. I think it's Ocean. But I do plan to buy more half pans because the cool thing here is, so this is a 36 half pan set, but I have an entire row here that I can put 12 more half pans in. So I'm going to probably, um, I did order some dot cards as well. So I'm going to wait till those dot cards come play with the dot cards and find some colors I really, really like. Maybe like a whole set of 12 that are really pretty granulating colors and probably fill the bottom of this palette with those. So it'll be like my super granulation section. <laughs> so that is my plan. I do also want to grab some of their pinks um, that look so pretty, well, in pictures. But like I said, I'm going to play with them on the dot cards as well because you know it's one thing to see it it's another to swatch it so I was really happy to get the dot cards from Jackson's and I'll show you guys those when they come but yeah thanks for hanging out with me while I swatched these um, these are going to be extra special but actually used I'm not gonna just sit here and like wow and <laughs> never use them in fact uh, there's a couple watercolor tutorials I have saved on my YouTube that I'm going to go use these on because, well, they, gosh darn it, I didn't spend that money for them to collect dust. So, 
All right, guys, until next time, take care. Bye.